Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today, Managing Your Course in My Courses. My name is Barbara Stetchison, and I'm here today with my colleague, Teddy Quintoro. We are both learning technology consultants with teaching and learning services. Also joining us today is Adam Finkelstein, who is the Associate Director of Learning Environments at TLS, and he will be moderating the chat during our session. There are just a few items I'd like to bring to your attention before we begin. This session is being recorded, so if you prefer to not be visible, you can turn off your video so that you don't appear in the recording. Also, the slides for this webinar and the recording, as well as additional resources, will be posted on the TLS website after this webinar. Um, and then please note that you all have been muted upon entry for the duration of the webinar. Teddy and I will be answering your questions at the end of the session. We're going to set aside about 10 minutes um, to do this. However, feel free to use the chat if you would like to type in any questions and our moderator, Adam, will be happy to address your questions there. So we've set aside three session outcomes for you today. First, we're gonna begin by looking at how to design your homepage with purpose to enhance the course experience for your students. Next, we're gonna take a look at um, identifying strategies and procedures for managing student grades using the grades tool in my courses. And then finally, we're gonna look at tracking student activities using the class progress tool and the intelligent agents tool in my courses as well. Someone may be not muted. Please, I ask you to keep your microphones muted. Thank you. All right, we're going to begin with what your students first see when they enter your course, your course homepage. A great way to help you manage your course is to design a homepage that is both meaningful for both you and your students. So in the slides that follow, we're going to look at some of the strategies and recommendations to help you design a homepage that does exactly that. So when you or your students first click on a course from the main landing page in my courses, you will see a page similar to what you see on this screen. This is your course homepage. Each course homepage has a default navigation bar, a banner, and widgets. However, your default is not your only option. It is fully customizable depending on your preferences and you have quite a bit of control over what your students see here. It's important to design a homepage with purpose and really think through what's most important within the context of what your students need to know or do. So you're gonna to wanna to consider limiting what you place on your homepage so that it only includes useful information and you also wanna organize your page to help students find the resources they need when they need them. Remember, the key here is to enhance the learning experience for your students. And some of the ways that you can do this is by customizing your nav bar, your banner, and your widgets. So let's take a look at how we can do this. A default banner image is applied to each course. And the purpose of the banner is to add visual styling and context to your course. Um, again, the default may not always be appropriate. I think back to when I met with an instructor who was teaching an anatomy course, and his banner was that of a roller coaster, similar to what you see here. Um, however, sometimes the default banner may be completely appropriate within the context of your course. And if you like the default, then by all means, keep it as is. But it's important to know that you do have the option of replacing it by choosing an image from one of the hundreds of images in the image bank. So as you can see here, we now have replaced our roller coaster with something more appropriate for an anatomy course. Also note that you do have an option to create and upload a custom banner. So if you choose to create a custom banner, just make sure it is the correct dimensions. And dimension specifications and details on how to change your banner, as well as any of the steps that we refer to during this presentation, please note that they will be posted on the TLS website after the session. So 
So next, let's look at customizing your navigation bar. What you see here is the navigation bar that is applied to all courses by default. It contains the most commonly used tools, such as content, Zoom, lecture recordings, discussions, assignments, and grades. Notes, note that um, the last two items that you see here, class list and course admin, are only visible to you and not to your students. You can change the navigation bar to reflect which tools you will be using in your course. So you'll likely want to keep content, grades, Zoom, and lecture recordings, um, as well as whichever engagement and assessment tools you're using. So if you're using assignments and discussions, maybe you're using quizzes or the groups tool. So if you wish to customize the nav bar, you can do so by clicking on the three little dots that you see here highlighted in blue, which will bring you to a page where you can easily delete and add tools. So for instance, if you're using the quizzes tool in your course, you'll need to add it to your nav bar since it does not appear here by default. Students will not be able to access any assessments created using the quizzes tool if you don't add it to your toolbar. So now you can see we've added it. So it's important to be selective about the links you have on the nav bar. So not only adding links to tools that may be missing, but also removing tools that you aren't using. And also the order they appear in is also something con to consider. We normally recommend that you place the most frequently accessed tools from left to right. Um, and again, remember visual, visual organization is important in helping your students find what they need quickly and easily. So another way you can customize your home page is by changing your widgets. Each of the boxes you see here um, is called a widget. The default widgets are the announcements widget and the calendar widget. And you can customize your home page by changing these widgets and adding others. The widgets that you choose to include on your home page should do two things. They should ease navigation and help with communication. You want to help your students find information easily and quickly by providing them with methods to access frequently used course resources and use widgets that help you share up-to-date course information and help students stay on top of course uh, due dates, for instance. So in the next few slides, we're gonna review the widgets that we find really useful and highly recommend in helping you manage your course. So the first uh, widget that we recommend is the announcement tip widget which again is one of your default widgets. It is a place to add messages um, that you would like students to see when they log into your course. You can use the announcement widget to communicate important information, such as a welcome message at the start of the semester, uh, extensions to assignment due dates, follow-ups from in-class discussions, links to new resources, course reminders, such as an upcoming deadline, changes to an assignment, and the list goes on. So lots of great uses um, for the announcement tool. And you're not limited to only using text um, for your announcements. You can add a variety of media, such as images. You can put in links. Um, you can embed a YouTube video. And you can even record a video message uh, using your computer's webcam. So this is a great way to create a more personal touch. You can also personalize your message by incorporating your student's name. So as you can see here, it says, welcome Barbara. Um, and this can be done using a simple variable called a replace string uh, when editing your announcement. And instructions again on how to do this will be found in the resources that we're gonna be sharing with you on the TLS website. The next widget that we recommend is the calendar widget. So it's another default widget. And it's a great way to help students stay on top of due dates and other important course deadlines, such as exams or assignment deadlines, for instance. You can also create custom events, such as a special presentation, if you're having a guest speaker, an upcoming holiday, um, and you can even schedule recurring events. And then a really nice feature of the calendar widget is that uh, deadline dates that are set up in other tools in my courses, such as the assignment or quizzes tool, are automatically displayed here. Students will see 14 upcoming events or deadlines in the widget, 
but they can access the full calendar by clicking on it. And another really nice feature is that students can subscribe to it with their preferred calendar software. So if they have Google Calendar, Outlook, iPhone, or Android Calendar, for instance. The next widget we recommend is not one of the default ones. It's called the Teacher Profile Widget. It's a custom widget that can be added to your homepage. And we really like this widget because it gives you a space where you can introduce yourself to your students. You can share a photo, a short bio, and even your social media details if you want. This is entirely optional, however. It's a nice widget to add to make your course feel you know, more personable for your students and give you more presence. When students feel like you're more present in your online environment, they're likely to be more engaged. And the fourth uh, widget that we would recommend to you is called the Visual Table of Contents. This is another custom widget that you can add to your homepage. We really like it because it allows for quick and easy access to your course content through visual and interactive tiles. So what you see here, all these six uh, little squares that you see on the screen are referred to as tiles. And each of these tiles represents a content module from your course. So by clicking on one of these tiles, you're brought directly to a specific module. Each course module's title is displayed in the title um, with uh, a little information button. I don't know if you can see it. My screen capture may be a little bit too small, but if you click on it, it will flip to reveal the module's description. Also, a nice feature is that students can track their progress for each module by looking at a progress bar as well as a number of completed topics within each module. So the example that you see here may be familiar to some of you who may have completed the My Courses Essentials course. You can see in this example, there are six modules that are represented. One is flipped uh, to reveal the description for that specific module. You'll also notice that as a student, I can see that I've completed 50% of the content within each module. And it also displays how many topics I have visited. We normally recommend this widget for courses with about eight to 10 content modules or less um, because your homepage will begin to get quite long, you know, and will require much scrolling if you have a course with say 20 modules in it. So once you've finished designing your homepage and you've added some content to your course, the next step is to think about how you can manage your student grades. Um, so we have a great tool for this and it's called the grades tool. Um, however, it's commonly referred to as the grade book. And so what is the grade book? Well, your grade book represents all the work you want to evaluate your students on in a course. It's where you can evaluate specific tasks um, such as assignments, quizzes, participation, presentations, exams, etc. In this example, you can see that I have four items that will be evaluated, including an assignment, a midterm participation, and a final exam. Um, you can enter grades for individual items, as you can see here. Or if you have your gradebook linked to other tools in my courses, if it's linked to quizzes, to a quiz, for instance, assignments, um, or the discussion tool, uh, then your grades for these items will automatically flow to the gradebook. Um, we find that students really appreciate when instructors use the grades tool because it allows them to see their progress in the course. Um, and here you'll see an example of a student's view of the gradebook. From the student's perspective, they can verify their grades um, on a specific assignment or test. They can also see any additional feedback that their instructor may have included, and they can also view their final grade, but only once it's been released by the instructor. So why use the grade book? Well, there's a variety of great reasons to use it. Um, the first one is that it does the math for you. Grades are automatically calculated. Multiple users can also enter grades at the same time. So this is especially handy if you have TAs in your course and they're helping you grade assignments, for instance. It's also really nice for record keeping. So you don't have to deal with 
Excel spreadsheets, emails, written notes, however um, you're used to managing your grades, you can now manage it all from one place. Um, you know, you enter your grades and you can even include feedback to accompany each of your grades. You can also manage exactly what your students see. You can decide what grade items you want students to see and when they see them by either hiding or making visible specific items in your gradebook. You can also decide whether they see the grades as a points value, a percentage, a letter grade, whether they see the calculation method or logic behind their final grade. And also final grades are not released to students automatically unless you explicitly publish them. So that's important to note. Another reason to use it is that you can sort, filter, and view statistics. So you can view details about a class, a group, or a section's overall grades for your course. You can also see such statistics as the minimum grade, a maximum grade, and even a graph showing the grade distribution. And finally, My Courses makes it very easy to transfer your students' final grades directly to Minerva. There is an export to Minerva wizard available in the gradebook tool. So the key takeaway here is that the grades tool is a huge time saver and also a great way to help you manage your student grades. So as the instructor, you determine how to set up your gradebook to best reflect your approach to evaluation in your course. And before you start setting up your gradebook in my courses, first, uh, we recommend that you take some time to think through the following five questions. So first, which course activities do you plan to evaluate? So in this example, we have three quizzes, a group project, a written report, a participation grade, and a final exam. Then you're going to want to think about which grading system is most appropriate for your course. So you're going to want to determine how the items that you're evaluating your students on contribute to their final grade. So will it be a weighted or points-based gradebook, for instance? And how will these points or weights, um, how will they be distributed? So for example, here we have three quizzes that are each scored out of 25 points and are each worth 10% of the final grade. Then we have a group project out of 100 points and it's worth 20% of the final grade. A written report also out of 100 points worth 20%. Participation out of five points, but worth 5% uh, as well. Um, and a final exam out of 100 points and worth 20%. And you can see that all my weights for each individual item, they add up to 100%. Next, you're going to think about how to handle ungraded items. So you can choose to drop ungraded items. So in this case, if a student didn't complete, say, one of the three quizzes, my courses will assume that the grade for this one quiz is excluded from the student's final grade calculations, so that the final grade will be inflated. Or you can choose to treat ungraded items as a zero. So this option will issue a zero for anything that is not graded. So if a student doesn't complete one of the three quizzes, they will receive a zero for it. And the final question to ask yourself is how will you calculate final grades? In my courses, you have two options. You can use a final calculated grade, which means that the final grade is calculated by the grade book, um, which means you cannot adjust the final grade without adjusting individual grade item scores. Or you can have a final adjusted grade, which allows you to manually change the final grade calculation uh, without affecting grade item scores. So note that if you plan to export to Minerva, you will have to use the final adjusted grade as your final grade. Um, the reason is that Minerva does not allow for decimal places. Therefore, you will need to round your grades accordingly before you export. So once you have thought through all of these questions, you can begin setting up your gradebook. Um, you will see the grades setup wizard page, as you see here, uh, when you navigate to the grades tool for the first time. 
the grade setup wizard guides you through a series of seven steps, including such thing as calculation options, such as your grading systems and schemes, as well as display options for you and your students, such as how many decimal, po decimal points will be displayed, uh, whether the grade, the grade students see will be in the form of a letter, a percentage, a number of points. So as a best practice, we highly recommend that you use the setup wizard before creating grade items in your gradebook, because making changes to the gradebook settings and calculation options after you begin tracking student grades can significantly affect existing data. So once you've completed your setup, you can begin creating your grade items, entering and managing your grades, and sharing this data with your students as you see fit. The gradebook is a great way to help you manage your student grades and keep an eye on your student progress throughout the term. And another way to track student progress is via the class progress tool. So now I'm going to leave it to Teddy to continue and he will explain more. Thanks, Barbara. I'm just going to try and go back to the PowerPoint. Okay. So you've set up your course in my courses, you've curated and developed new material, you've created fixed and flexible activities, but how do you know if students are actually accessing the material and engaging in my courses? And how can you keep students on track? But what if also you have a large class? So in this remote environment, we don't have as many cues to rely on, like students not showing up to class, their facial expressions. So how about letting my courses do some of that analytics for you? So first we have the class progress tool. Uh, it's available for all instructors, either from the default navigation bars, but also you can take a look at it from the course admin uh, tool. And depending on what items you have available in your course, you can see which areas students have been accessing and completing. So for example, in, the, in here in this view, I have added the content visited, um, discussions, so it shows the number of posts read, the threads created, replies posted, um, the number of logins to the system, and the grades obtained to the course. So you can, you can also display quiz and assignment indicators if that's uh, the tools that you use as well. But only four indicators can be shown uh, at once. So if you hover over each bar um, under each particular student, you can actually see more details pertaining either to the grade or the login, the dates, and things like that. What I find most interesting in this particular view is not so much whether students have visited the content uh, or logged into the system per se, but I like the discussions. So you can tell whether students are spending time reading through the threads, but not necessarily authoring posts. So if you're planning on weekly discussion threads, this will eventually be a great place for you to, to come back and see. Um, just, to, just like any other system data, we have to interpret with a grain of salt. Not all students are the same. Some may spend more time interacting with the materials in my courses. Others would prefer just reading the textbook. Others love to hang out in the discussion board if they could. Others avoid it unless it's graded. And even some students will probably click more if they know you're paying attention. So lots of activity in my courses will not necessarily mean a successful student. This being said, if you look at the overall data and pattern, a student that does not access much material, has not read many postings, and is logging infrequently within the last two weeks of the course, well, that might raise a flag. If you have a large class, um, you may end up with several pages in class progress. So what you could do instead is click on the filter here and actually um, filter them by groups. So you would have to create groups in my courses. Um, I know some instructors generally do for large classes where they, they set to groups uh, by TAs, by teaching assistants. And so if you set that, you can also do it in the and view it in class progress and filter it through that. So another interesting part about class progress is you can drill down to see the specific details for a particular student. So in this case, if you have a student asking a particular question on the course outline, and you can see whether they viewed it after or before it was updated. So um, I'm gonna just hover on, on top here. So you can see the course outline, it says the number of two visits, um, and it also mentions when it was last visited. Um, and also earlier, um, we saw that the login information of, of students, right? Um, that was pertaining to the login in my courses, but you can actually drill down to the particular login uh, to your course. And in this case, if you can see there, it, it actually says the number of days uh, absent um, between, I think it was on uh, the, the day that I, I searched this, so it was earlier in June, 
uh, and you can see the absent period. So that might be a part where you, you, you may want to go back to see the student. But finally, the part that I, I find most interesting again is you can take a look at the overall discussion activity. So again, you can take a look at the, the post read, the threads created, replies posted. So those are the numbers. But it, you can also drill down. You can open each thread and read each post made by that particular student to view the quality of each post. So this would be a great place to come back again if you're assessing the discussions. Again, what if you have a large class? class? So it may be challenging to keep track of each individual students once you have a class over 50 students. You can use a tool called Intelligent Agents, which will send an email based on certain criteria that you set. And even though it is automated, you can personalize that email by adding variables. Uh, Barbara mentioned earlier in the announcements to use the um, in, um, replace strings. It's the same uh, variable that we would use here. And you can, you can add the student's first name and you can add the course title to, say, to give a bit more hints on the student so it's personalized as if you were sending it. So for example, you can flag you or your teaching assistants when a student seems to be falling behind. So that would be an email automatically sent to you or your TAs, not the student. Uh, the criteria would be if they did not submit the assignment by the due date, uh, please let me know. You can also set reminders uh, to, on key deadlines to students. So the criteria here would be not accessing the assignments or quizzes X number of days before the deadlines uh, is, is coming up or not logging into the course for the past seven days. You know, seven days is probably a good guideline for students where they should be logging in at, at least every week. Um, these emails don't, don't only have to be about tracking students. You can also send a welcome email to all students that have access to the course for the first time. I know I hear there are some instructors that are thinking about opening their course uh, ahead of time. Uh, it might be a good idea to send students that are accessing the courses early a personalized, personalized email informing them of what they might expect to see in this course and maybe even asking them to fill an anonymous survey. What is their interest in this course? Do you have any particular constraints or concerns given our circumstances? And finally, you can also automatically send encouraging email messages based on completion of, the, of activities. So if you're going back to creating a discussion board, um, you can co congratulate them and thank them for posting in their first welcome discussion thread. Or congratulations, you have completed half of the coursework. So those are some of the things that you could do particularly in large classes and let my courses do automatically. So we've talked about the tools that you can use to organize and communicate to your students. You're gonna be likely making some tweaks and changes to the courses. You can use the class progress and the analytics that my courses provide to make assumptions on the student's behavior. But perhaps a more, more direct method to gather feedback is to ask students directly. Uh, so for example, you can create an anonymous survey where you ask them the simple questions of, which particular activities are helping you learn? If there was one thing you could change about this course, what would it be? In fact, I'd like to direct you to the resource here um, uh, on mid-course evaluation that will provide you different options to gather this feedback. We have whether it's a survey, an anonymous discussion post, or uh, using polling at McGill. It helps to be, uh, uh, just uh, Adam, if you don't mind uh, posting that, that link uh, as well, because it'll be easier if to, to copy and paste for instructors, that would be great. Thank you. Um, it helps to be honest with the effort that you made to work on the course, and uh, you would like to, 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 to see feedback, um, to get feedback, to see if this effort is worth continuing throughout the semester. But also you have to acknowledge uh, to students that some recommendations that students are giving may not be feasible uh, given the circumstances. All right, so we've given you a lot of information today. Um, a good next step, if you haven't been there already, would be to take a look at a course called My Courses Essentials on, on your My Courses homepage. This is a course where all instructors are added automatically and a tool that get, to get you started. It is self-paced uh, and it includes its descriptions of the most commonly used tools and includes best practices and links to step-by-step -step instructions for setting up the tools. Uh, you can navigate it either as a full course or you can just come in when you need to and refer to, to it as you're building your course. I would also like to remind you that this, is, this webinar is part of a series. You can register to the others on the TLS website. 
So perhaps the next uh, one that you might consider is the preparing course content for remote delivery, but there are many others as well. Um, you, you can take a look at, it, at them on the TLS website. And uh, in fact, also the recording of preparing course content, I think it was delivered yesterday, is already available on the website that's over here. Um, if Barbara, do you mind posting that uh, link? Um, and also the recording of our current one will also be posted on this page. So the link that you see here will be posted on the chat. And uh, you will see here that this, uh, you, can, you can stream the video recordings afterwards um, on the right hand side and download the slides. But you can also find, and this is the key part, if you click on the plus, uh, the resources and readings uh, for the, the particular webinar that we had. So finally, this concludes the webinar portion of our end, but we would like to know what is your most important takeaway from today's session? And two, do you have any additional questions uh, on what we covered today? So please use the chat tool uh, to type in your answers. And also, I'd like to add that if there's any questions that we can't address today, uh, we will review them and we're going to answer them as best as we can in the resources pages. Thank you. So Teddy, I have a quick question. Some of the things that have came up in the chat um, regarding intelligent agents. Um, maybe you've got some uh, other examples that you've seen with instructors um, about some types of intelligent agents that they've set up that can do some wow factor kind of things in their class. I, I mean, the biggest ones, the, the ones that, I, that, I, that I've heard from instructors used outside of, uh, of McGill was one that, that was purely online. And, and um, the key criteria that he mentioned as a, as a suggestion was not to do intelligent agents based on the content viewed or, 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 or content posted, but really on, on an activity completion or not completion. So, so what I talked about there is like, you know, discussion posted, quiz completed, quiz not completed, uh, some things that, that really, and really just making use of the, 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 the uh, replace strings where, where you add the first name of the student, really customizing it. And even you can put in links to, to the, the, the assignment. So if you're reminding a student, for example, to that they, they have a deadline coming up for the assignment, you can put in the link to the assignment tool there and they just have to click on it and go directly to the assignment tool and not have to figure out where this assignment is. So it's really, it really is to keep track for, for students to help them, especially when, when there's a lot of students um, that are trying to, 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 to do the coursework. So that's some of the tips you can do. I'm trying to take a look at the chat at the same time as well. Yeah. yeah. Seeing a lot of comments about takeaways. It's really nice to see. Yeah, replace strings are nice. They're a nice little trick and they're easy. They're easy to integrate. It's a comment here from Christina about tremendously helpful, uh, have steep learning curve. Are there consultations available uh, once they've gone through all of the webinars? Yes. Uh, yeah, Christina. Yes, absolutely. Um, you can meet with one of the learning technology consultants, such as Teddy or myself or our colleague Jasmine Parron. Um, so you, there is, um, you can basically send an email to IT support to request a consultation. Um, and there's also a form that you can fill out for this. Uh, we can share these details with you as well. I'm just going to find them and then I'll post them in the chat. Um, yeah, and then you can absolutely set up a consultation and we can go over um, any details with you. Uh, just a bit of a heads up. Uh, the Intelligent Agents is not in the uh, My Courses Essentials, but we'll definitely be posting links for that directly in the resources page so that you can, you can uh, get there because it's a bit more of an advanced, uh, not advanced tool, but you know, it's there, there's, a, there's more to it. So we'll definitely have direct links for that one.
there any other questions? Thanks everyone for attending. We still have about 10 minutes, so we're happy, or nine minutes, so we're happy to stay and answer any questions that you may have. Um, but if there are no questions, then we can also end here. Oh, we have, oh we have, here's one there. there. That's, that's a great question. I, I think we, we have it uh, in, in, the, in the webinar um, from yesterday's uh, co content um, for embedding videos. Uh, Selena, maybe you can take a look at that uh, webinar. Um, it, there, there are a couple of options, but the, the I mean, the, a quick answer would be to take a look at the lecture recording uh, um, tool. Uh, then you can have it uh, there. But also um, taking a look at uh, uh, there, there is a way of just adding the video directly um, within the content. So we can upload. Uh, There's a question about. Um, the instructions for replace strings. We're going to be adding that to the TLS website um, in the area that uh, Teddy pointed out for webinars. So we're going to have a list of resources that we've referred to during the session and there will be a link to how to um, add replace strings to your announcements um, that will be added there as well as one of the resources. So Catherine, both the assignment and the quizzes, the dates entered there will be showing up in the calendar tool. The due dates. Yeah, that's right. They're automatically um, any of the dates that you add to any of the My Courses tools, such as quizzes, assignments, discussions, those are automatically pulled into the calendar tool and they are automatically displayed there. Uh, Kenneth, um, so, so by, by default, the course, My Courses courses open uh, at the start. The, the, the class start date um, that's set in banner. But if you do want to make it available uh, beforehand, you can go to the course admin and it's, it's a place called course offering information and you can tweak the start um, date there. Uh, the only caveat that I would say for that when you open it is to, to keep in mind that students aren't required to actually do coursework until the first uh, day of class, but you may be uh, open to let them peek at maybe the course outline or other things that you want them to, to see before the, the semester starts. Um, oh, and it was already answered. <laughs> when I see that, Adam, thank you for adding the links to the replace strings. And yes, when you do open early, as Adam mentioned, it's, it's a good idea to make sure you, you uh, you put those, those things hidden like the assignments and quizzes so that students uh, don't access them early. Yeah, Melissa, that's a really great idea. Sending a welcome email to your class um, to let them know that you've opened your my courses course is just to let them know is a fantastic idea yeah, and remember you could use the intelligent agent because uh students are coming in and out uh, before the, the the start of class they would be adding and dropping so um the intelligent agent what it does is when you go into it that's when it triggers the the the, the, the criteria and it will then send it uh, afterwards to the students so that uh because if you send it via the class list uh, email class list, it will be only for the students that are currently enrolled in that course at that, at that time, at that particular time. Yeah, automation. Any other questions? I'm just enjoying seeing some of the, I think, virtual backgrounds <laughs> of some folks there. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so you can find the intelligent agent in the um, in the class progress tool. It's at the top right corner. You can you can add it from there. But you can also go under uh, the course admin, and you should be able to see the intelligent agents there. So there's two places you should be able to go to. Right. 
can uh, can go back to that uh, screenshot if uh, on the PowerPoint so that you can take a look at it. So on this um, on the screen. Um, in, in class progress, there's a use agents uh, over here at the top uh, top right. Uh, I'm gonna try to see if you see my use agents to automate it. Feedback is right here, so you can get access to it there. All right. Well, if there are no other questions, I guess we can end here. All right, well, thank you everyone so much for joining us today and for all your wonderful comments and questions. And uh, yeah, we wish you all the best and keep an eye out for the resources, as we mentioned, um, on the TLS um, webinars page. Goodbye. Bye, everyone.